What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. That big bubble of red that you see there on the left-hand side of that screen next to my head, that's going to cause all kinds of chaos over the next few days. It's the one of the reasons why that we're dealing with that severe weather threat in the Pacific Northwest on this evening of March 26th. And it's also going to be the reason we're talking about the potential for more severe weather as we get into the weekend. We're going to break all that down. I'm going to put the chapters in the description of this video in case you want to bounce around to the different topics that we're going to be talking about. One of those is the flood threat moving through parts of Texas as well as we speak. That will continue into tomorrow. So we're going to get all into it. First and foremost, the warm anomalies are crazy in the west, really west of the Rockies, really west of the Mississippi. Anomalies for tomorrow on Thursday, anywhere from 20 to 25 degrees above normal in that deep dark red or purple color closer to the panhandle of Nebraska, about 15 to 20 degrees above normal. We'll take a look at the actual temperatures. That is because we have that ridge building here. We have the trough building out in this direction into the east, allowing it to still be on the cooler side, not as extreme, 5 to 10 degrees uh, below where we should be. That bubble of warmth though is going to intensify relative to normal as it moves through the upper midwest so places like nebraska iowa especially southern minnesota parts of the great lakes are going to be very very warm getting into the end of this work week before another round of uh, much colder air blast back in behind the system again that could and likely will bring a few rounds of severe weather and you see the topsy-turvy nature of the weather what was just super super warm this week look at what happens as we start april there's the time frame up top that's wednesday april 2nd look at how cold it gets relative to normal again that is going to be the temperature anomaly all right so let's actually put some numbers to this as we move out into into the future this is going to be on thursday you see where the warmth is, warmth is hastings nebraska 71 we're in the mid 70s in eugene Boise City is going to be 80 degrees tomorrow, March 27th. We're talking about air temperatures getting close to triple digits uh, in parts of the deep desert south. It's going to be a crazy, crazy warm down there. Friday, that warmth expands again as uh, we get towards Iowa. Southern Minnesota, Rochester could be getting into the low to mid-70s. Des Moines, Iowa around 80. Hastings, 81. Still that chill hanging on in the extreme northern tier of the country. International Falls only into the mid-30s. That warmth again surges further to the east. Pittsburgh gets back into the mid-70s. Uh, that will continue to slide to the east and fuel that potential for severe weather as we get into the start of the weekend. As this system is materializing, it is going to tap into a ton of Gulf moisture. Again, big flood threat continues into parts of the South, uh, especially Texas. Later on tonight on March 26th, it continues into March 27th. We'll take a look at rainfall totals again. The bigger days here are going to be on the rest of the 26th and the 27th. But double-digit rainfall totals are around Corpus Christi, Texas, not out of the question. Near San Antonio, Victoria, Austin, Texas, uh, south of Waco, again, Houston. We're going to pick up some rain, certainly not as much as what we're going to see just to your south and west, uh, right around San Antonio, anywhere from 5 to maybe even up to 10 inches. Waco, Texas, about 1 to 3 inches. Same deal for us into Dallas. So that is where the rain is going to fall. Now, it's kind of in a weird spot. We're talking about flooding in the same areas that have been in an exceptional drought. So this is the latest drought monitor as issued weekly by the United States Department of Agriculture. And again, where you see this deep, rich, dark red color, San Antonio, just to the west of Austin, that is an exceptional drought or an extreme drought in Austin, Texas. We are in a severe drought in Corpus Christi. Uh, Houston, we've gotten ourselves out of it and then certainly back towards uh, the panhandle of Texas, closer to El Paso. That's where the exceptional drought comes back into play. So we are getting the rain where we need it. The issue is a lot of that is going to run off as it's coming way too much at uh, – uh, all at once. We don't want the never want the rain all at once, and certainly we're gonna get that. So uh, heads up, if you're in South Central Texas, that's where we can have some big time issues when it comes to the flood threat for the remainder of March 26th into March 27th. So we're gonna play it out here with the high res future radar, and the two big things we're gonna be focusing on here is uh, the southern part where we're talking about all that moisture, 
And then here is our big behemoth area of low pressure that is rolling through the Pacific Northwest. Again, it's creating that potential severe weather threat in the Pacific Northwest, that rare threat that we talked about in yesterday's video. And it's going to help to pull up all of this moisture that we have rolling through parts of uh, the deep south and into the Gulf state. So there we go. That's going to be four o'clock on the afternoon of Thursday, March 27th. We'll take this further out into the future as we get into Friday. This is when uh, the first round of strong storms are going to be possible. This is going to be late Friday night. We have uh, some very, very heavy rain being through Houston, Louisiana at this point. Um, we have some light snow putting towards uh, the Canadian border, closer to the United uh, to the uh, UP of Michigan. Some mixing coming in through the pink will take you further out in time. This is going to be Saturday at five o'clock. Uh, this is when the storm really starts materializing. Some very heavy rain in the Pacific in the uh, Upper Midwest. Some heavy snow now into the Intermountain West, and then some really really heavy rain still skirting across the North Gulf Coast. There's that narrow stripe of heavy snow. We talked about that if you're watching the brand new ticker at the bottom of the screen. It kind of highlights everything that we're going to be talking about in this video. And of course, we'll break things down into more detail, of course, if you've been reading that ticker. But there's that narrow stripe of snow and then that narrow stripe of ice um, that you see there on the northern side. Of course, we are getting into March. It's getting harder and harder to get that cold air, although it's going to be cold enough for somebody to get some snow there. We'll take a closer look at that in just one second. This is 10 o'clock on your Monday evening. Uh, that severe weather threat is going to march to the east and the eastern seaboard 95 corridor going to be under the gun for the potential for some strong storms. We'll get a little deeper into that in just one second. Want to quickly touch on the cold side of this system. Uh, places like Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, that's where we're really going to be dealing with the snow. Wisconsin also included in that. Um, if you've been watching some of the ensembles, it's been trending north a little bit. Yesterday, we had the narrow band of uh, three plus inches. So this is the ensemble uh, at mean. Uh, and what this is doing is it's taking uh, the European ensembles are a mixture of um, are a mixture of 51 different members. And we're taking the average of this. So the the higher percentage. So we'll say when we take a, the look here, 31 percent of those members are forecasting three inches or greater of snow um, just north of the Twin Cities. So this is closer to Duluth, certainly getting up into northern Wisconsin, uh, the UP, Sault Ste. Marie, Marquette, Michigan. Um, that's where the numbers even go higher. So 60% of the European ensembles are biting at, we're going to have at least three inches of snow. Um, Sheboygan included in that as you may have seen, and then certainly in the mountains as that upper low starts to swing on by. Now, for the severe weather side of this, again, we showed you the future radar coming through. This is going to be for Sunday. Everybody's making a whole big hubbaloo over this, uh, going crazy that we're talking major, major tornado outbreak. Look, just because, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but just because, and I mentioned this yesterday as I keep on cutting myself off, just because the Storm Prediction Center is highlighting something, it's not talking about the intensity of it i know there's all these ai machine learning things being shared around and they're a tool in the toolbox they're not gospel by any means they're looking at past weather events to kind of look into the future a little bit to see how something can play out certainly the environment is going to be ripe. i showed you the moisture streaming up from the gulf of mexico um when you're talking about the uh all you know feeding that flood threat across the north gulf coast um, it's also going to help to supply some instability. You have to remember it is March. Um, we're going to be watching things carefully as we get closer and closer to severe weather season. Here we go with Sunday, uh, the outlook there. But the point I'm trying to make is just because the Storm Prediction Center has higher confidence that severe weather is going to be there, it doesn't mean we're going to be breaking ridiculous tornadoes out throughout that entire area. Okay, that's certainly going to be a possibility. Nonetheless, it's not looking like what it was a couple of weeks ago. There we go, the severe weather risk on Monday. I showed you that severe weather threat. So in order to kind of dissect what is going on with this, I want to fast forward you to Friday. We're going to turn our attention to this guy here. That upper low is what's going to come in and give us the opportunity again for some severe weather. So you see it spiraling and spiraling and spiraling out there. And it's going to be this little dip in the jet stream. Let me redo that again. Let me take this a little further back um, just to kind of give you that characterization 
from uh, starting it on Friday the 28th through Monday the 31st is this little ripple right here. So it's certainly there uh, where you see the little kinks in the lines there. That's a negatively tilted shortwave trough there coming through St. Louis. So yeah, I would expect some strong thunderstorms. It is certainly nowhere near the bite of what we just come had come through the deep south in um, uh, just a couple of weekends ago. Uh, a lot of YouTube channels are not going to tell you that. I'm just going to be straight with you there. They're not going to tell you that. They're just going to be like, okay, hey, this is concerning. And I mean, it is. We're watching for severe weather. Um, but just because there's a highlight there for severe weather uh, does not mean that we're going to have long track tornadoes all the way through. Again, it's certainly possible in spots. Um, but again, this is certainly not the most concerning severe weather signature that I have ever seen. So thank you again uh, for tuning in. And we'll catch you in the next video.